Nike is an American multinational corporation that is engaged in the design, development, manufacturing, and worldwide marketing and sales of footwear, apparel, equipment, accessories, and services. The company is headquartered in Oregon in the USA, and it is the largest supplier of athletic shoes and apparel in the world, and a major manufacturer of sports equipment. In 2020, the brand alone was valued in excess of 32 billion US dollars making it the most valuable brand among sports businesses. Nike ranked number 89 in the 2018 Fortune 500 list of the largest United States corporations by total revenue. The company was founded in 1964 as Blue Ribbon Sports by Bill Bowman and Phil Knight and officially became Nike in 1971. The company takes its name from Nike, the Greek goddess of victory. In addition to manufacturing sportswear and equipment, the company operates retail stores under the Nike Town name. Nike sponsors many high-profile athletes and sports teams around the world, with the highly recognised trademarks of Just Do It and the Swoosh logo. Nike generates its revenues by directly selling to customers or through dealers. Nike sells directly to customers through Nike brand and category experience stores, online sales through its websites, and Nike factory stores. Nike also reaches out to its customers through its widespread dealer networks that include footwear stores, sporting stores, department stores, and other retail accounts. Nike is the world's number one sports brand. It has built its brand over years using sponsorship agreements with celebrity athletes, professional teams, and college athletic teams. Recent branding efforts also include using digital technologies to engage directly with the younger customer and receiving direct feedback about the overall customer experience. The Nike Plus running sensor developed in collaboration with Apple and Nike Fuel Band are examples of these digital initiatives. Nike breaks its financial metrics into three categories, Nike Brand, Converse and Corporate. The Nike brand is further broken down into geographical segments, North America, Europe, Middle East and Africa, Greater China, Asia Pacific and Latin America, and the global brand divisions. The Nike brand segment comprises 95% of the company's total revenue and 95% of the company's total earnings before interest and tax. Nike also breaks out revenue, but not profits, for its major product lines and distribution channels. The share of revenue generated by each of Nike's product lines, for example, is footwear at 68%, apparel at 27%, equipment at 3.6%, and others. A very negligible amount is attributable to other, which includes revenue from licensing businesses of the global brands divisions and converse segments, and to foreign currency hedge gains and losses accounted for in the corporate segment. Nike reports both revenue and EBIT its primary measure for evaluating operating performance for its geographic business segments. First up at number three, we have corporate. Nike's corporate segment revenue primarily consists of foreign currency hedge gains and losses related to revenues generated by Nike's other operating segments. The segment posted revenue of 13 million US dollars in Q1 FY 2021, comprising a small 0.1% of total revenue. The segment reported a loss before interest and taxes of $497 million, despite a 44% rise in revenue. Coming in at number 2 is Converse. Nike's Converse segment is engaged in the design, distribution, licensing and sale of casual sneakers, apparel and accessories under the following trademarks. Converse, Chuck Taylor, All Star, One Star and Jack Purcell. The segment posted $563 million dollars in revenue during Q1 FY 2021, comprising about 5% of the total. It reported $168 million in EBIT, about 5% of the total as well. Revenue grew 1.4%, while EBIT rose 21% compared to the previous year's quarter. If you're enjoying this style of video, feel free to give it a like to let me know and subscribe for more. Finally coming in at number 1 is the Nike brand which is separated into global geographic locations as follows. Nike's North America segment posted $4.2 billion in revenue in Q1 FY 2021, comprising nearly 40% of total revenue. EBIT came in at $1.3 billion, comprising almost 42% of the total. This segment's revenue fell 1.6%, while EBIT rose 18% compared to the year-ago quarter. 
Nike's Europe, Middle East, and Africa segment posted $2.9 billion in revenue during Q1 FY21, comprising about 27% of the total revenue. EBIT was $692 million, about 22% of the total revenue, and EBIT for the quarter rose 5% and 13.6% respectively. Nike's Greater China segment posted $1.8 billion in revenue in Q1 FY21, nearly 17% of total revenue. EBIT was $688 million, comprising about 22% of the total. Revenue and EBIT were up 6% and 2.8% respectively, compared to the same three-month period a year ago. Nike's Asia-Pacific and Latin America segment posted $1.1 billion in revenue during Q1 FY21, about 10% of total revenue. EBIT was $280 million, about 9% of the total. Revenue and EBIT both fell 18% each. Nike has maintained its leadership position due to its continued focus on design, research and development. Nike filed for 541 patents in the year 2014. Along with 281 patents filed for shoes, it also filed 70 patents for technology and 39 for manufacturing. Some of the Nike innovative products across its lineup are Nike Air, Luna, Zoom, Free and Nike Plus. Nike doesn't own any manufacturing sites and produces all of its products through independent contractors. All footwear and apparel products are manufactured outside the United States, while equipment products are produced both in the US and abroad. This strategy has helped Nike improve its profit margins, reduce inventories, minimize price markdowns, and ensure that the customer receives the right product assortment on time. Let me know in the comments what you think of Nike and whether they will continue to dominate the sports clothing and equipment market. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more business news and stock market investing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.